Hi everyone, thanks for joining in today. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to make this uh, piano hinge uh, little mini album and um, I'm using the Cartabella Snow Fun Pack from Country Craft Creations and um, I'm just going to flip through real quick so you can see if you're interested in making this. Um, I'm usually someone who uses a hidden hinge system and sometimes I like a little variety and so I'll show you how to use these skewers uh, instead of always using the hidden hinge. So this is just a quick easy album. Um, like I said, it's the Snow Fun Pack from Country Craft Creations. The, uh, there is no chipboard. Uh, this is just uh, cardstock folded in half and secured with adhesive so they're a little bit thicker and more durable. Um, here's my front page. I'll just go through it quickly because I'll show you later in the video each page and talk a little bit more about how uh, I embellished and decorated. It's kind of squeaky as it's turning. So pretty tight because the skewers haven't been in there for very long. Okay, so if you're interested in making this piano hinge um, mini album, you'll need a paper pack, you'll need some plain card stock, you'll need the embellishments and your adhesive, a trimmer, um, you'll need the wooden skewers, um, I have two charms here and some wax linen, um, have some odds and ends embellishments, but hopefully these are things that you have on hand. So stay tuned and I will show you how to make this little mini album. Hi friends, this is Kim. I'm going to go ahead and show you the Piano Hinge uh, mini album, the tutorial on how I make it. There are a lot of different ways that you can do this, um, but I'm going to show you the way that I like working through the Piano Hinge. Um, the first thing you're going to need are some skewers or some bamboo skewers and the ones I got happened to be a little bit smaller than what I normally get so I had to adjust the size of my album. Um, they come in different sizes. This is actually from Hobby Lobby so maybe they just have their smaller. It was in the cake decorating section. So maybe if you went to a grocery store and got some they would be larger. Let me show you another album that I made. This was um, my cousin. Dana uh, is super crafty and she had shown me how to make these piano hinge um, mini albums and her skewers were thicker and so there are other ones out there but this is uh, the look of the spine once you have the skewers in there so you just need to find a package of them um, you'll notice that these are cut off on top so they're not sharp you can choose to cut them off or you can choose to leave them pointed. I won't know until I'm done with the mini album just because I don't have little kids anymore. So the sharpness isn't, I'm not really worried about it. However, I'll have to see how it looks when I'm done, if I like the sharp top or not. But it's not hard to uh, cut them off. And if I do end up cutting them off, then I just have to get some paint and do the top. So this is um, the piano hinge. So let me show you besides, I'm going to do eight pages in my book. Uh, so if you do eight pages, you need seven skewers. So it's always one less than however many pages you're going to do. So I took my seven skewers and I matched the paper and I painted all of them this blue color so that it looks good with the paper. So all of them, this is that, um, Snow Fun by Cartabella. So I just pick a color that you like. Some people like to leave them the color of the bamboo. That's fine too, but I like, had I had red, I probably wouldn't have painted them red, but I didn't want to go to the store and all I had was blue. And I just use an acrylic paint. Um, doesn't matter what brand. I mean, it takes one coat and it's really easy. So then I let those dry and then I'm ready to work with them. But I'm just going to set these off to the side. Like I said, I have seven because I'm doing eight pages. So decide on what color you want them and set them to the side after you painted them. The eight pages that um, I did, I've already folded them in half and scored them. So I started off with the eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and I cut it down so that it was six and a half by 11. Let me just double check, but I'm pretty sure that's what I did. I didn't cut any of the length off the eight and a half by 11. So, yep. And then 
six and a half. So six and a half by 11 for each of these pages. And then you would just find the five and a half mark, the halfway mark and fold them in half. Now what some people do, I did eight of those. So put it on your scoreboard, score pal, whatever you have, Martha Stewart, whatever. Um, put the 11 inch side up at the top and half of 11 is five and a half. So I scored it there and then I just folded it and made sure that they lined up real nice. And then I did use my um, bone folder to crease those so that they had a real nice, nice crease. So some people, when they do their piano hinge, they leave each page separate. So you would have this page, this page. I like to make mine a little bit more durable. So I end up gluing these pages together so it's thicker. And so you don't see the skewer when you open it up. You don't see as much of the wood dowel. So um, that's how I'm going to show you how to do it. I just like the thickness of gluing the two pieces together. So I like to make a template um, after you have these all folded. Uh, I like to make a template so that I cut all of my pieces uh, the same on the end on the, for the hinge. So what I have done is I have cut a piece of paper. Uh, it's a little bit thicker than paper. Uh, it's like a heavier piece of cardstock. And I made it six and a half inches long because that's how long my or how tall my book is going to be. So for six and a half, I went ahead and cut a six and a half inch, and it's about a, it's about an inch and a half wide. It doesn't really matter. And then I drew a line at about um, three fourths inches up. Let me double check that too. I don't want to give you the wrong. Uh, it's yeah, it's about four, a fourth of an inch to three. It, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't have to be exact, but I want. Uh, this will be the depth that I cut out my triangles to put the dowels in. So I didn't want it a fourth. Of, I think it's a little bit more than a fourth of an inch. One, two, well, it's about a fourth of an inch, people. Okay, so I just drew a line as a guideline. And because my, uh, this is six and a half inches tall, I went every seven eighths of an inch and put a tick mark every seven eight so there's going to be a hair more on this right end just because it would have if i would have done seven eighths all the way through i have one eighth of an inch left over so i tried to adjust as i went but about seven eighths you just want them evenly spaced and you're going to notch out see this was for another book that i did you're just going to make little triangles uh in your template so that everything all of your book will be lined up exactly the same. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and wherever I have a tick mark, can you see I just put little tick marks about every seven eighths of an inch. I'm just gonna cut up to the line and make a triangle. And I wanna try and be as consistent as I can, but it doesn't matter if they're off a little bit. So I'm gonna try and make all of them about that size, okay? So I'm not going to measure, but I'm just going to eyeball, go up to the line and cut a triangle. And if I notice that one is a lot bigger or smaller, I'll try to adjust, but that's pretty good. Triangle up to the line. That one looks a hair smaller to me. Let me see if I can. Okay. Triangle at the next seven eighths mark. That one looks smaller to me. If you are really picky about everything being exactly the same, then you might want to measure a different way. But to me, you're not going to notice it when you put the skewers in. So I'm not going to lose sleep over it. <laughs> there are some things I'm really picky about. This isn't one of them. So it will work just fine. You don't have to be a perfectionist on this part. So they're all turning out to be about the same. And I have one more. And remember this one's gonna be a hair longer just because um, of the measurement. It didn't turn out exactly 
perfect when I went every seven eighths of an inch. Okay, now the reason why I chose to do this album is it is the holidays and I wanted a fast book that was adorable um, that I could make and gift if I wanted to or just use it for my own pictures. I'm going to go ahead and do a walkthrough of the book that I made. That my This was my cousin's design, not mine, um, but just to kind of give you a feel for um, what it will look like on the inside. So you can still see, you can see the hinge and you can still see, you know, part of the dowel or the skewer and that's totally fine, but it's just a nice book that you can make quickly and still add some a few embellishments that aren't too thick just to give it some excitement. The pages turn really easily and the reason why is because when we glue the pages together we're going to leave a little bit of a margin just so that we have that um, easy turn. There's a pocket here and she we put a tag in and we always left pictures uh, for photographs because that's the main idea is for this album is to have some pictures. And the paper she used is really pretty too. Um, this is a pocket and it's held closed with a really cute clasp there. Okay, so that's the look we're going for. And you know, when I decorate mine, there'll maybe be some things that are similar to this, but um, I have some really cute uh, chipboard pieces from the collection that I'll incorporate. Um, but it's just a fast, easy book, and I like having a different spine every once in a while instead of always doing like a hidden hinge type spine. Okay, so I digress. Let's get back on track. <laughs> so I have my template, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay that. I'm going to, on the folded side, I'm going to place my template on the edge, and I'm just going to take my scissors and clip out a triangle where I already have my triangles cut. And I'm wondering if I need my smaller scissors for this. I love my Tim Holtz, but let me find my, I have a lot of scissors to choose from. Might be easier. Okay, get it lined up. And I'm just gonna go through and snip out with my template on top, those little triangle pieces. Make sure it's lined up. If you want to use washi tape to, you know, tape it to the base, you can so that it doesn't move around, but it's easy to line it right back up. I'm just cutting out little triangles. So that everything will line up just nice as can be when I put the skewers in. And boy, is it a quick binding! Like once it's it's slick. Okay, so let me show you. That's what it looks like. Now, some people are gonna, you know, you can watch different YouTube videos, and they're gonna show you that you push one in, keep one out, push one in. I don't do that. So I'm going to leave it exactly like this and I'm going to do all eight pages and then I will show you how I glue it. Um, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit now that you've seen how to cut this. I would go through and do that again with all eight pages, putting my template down on the fold, not on the open part, and then cutting out those notches. Um, I'll do that off camera so I don't bore you. Um, but the paper that is going to go on top, um, I cut out 16 pieces because if you have eight pages front and back, uh, that gives you 16. And so, um, these pages measure, I went ahead and took a half inch off each so that I could use the six by six pad. So I'm using the six by six snow fun pad by Cartabella. And to use, be able to use the whole sheet and not have waste, um, this is five inches across and six inches up and down. So, yep, they're five by six. And you're going to end up gluing those right like so on the page. Okay. It doesn't matter what side, but 
And so that will be your base page. And again, we're going to have this glued on the inside. So then we'll flip it on the back and then the other page will be on the back. Um, I'll probably um, ink the edges. I'm trying to decide if I want to do red just to give it a pop. You know, I probably will. I'll probably do red around the edges. Um, but I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to finish notching uh, my binding on all eight pieces. And um, then I'll come back on and show you how to glue it. And um, you might want to be cutting your mat. You need 16 of these and they're five by six. Okay. I hope that wasn't too random. I feel like I kind of jumped around, but I think it'll all come together once you get started. So I'm going to do a quick review. We're doing eight pages, so you need seven bamboo skewers. Paint them the color you want or keep them the bamboo color. That's fine. Leave those to dry. Take your paper that is six and a half by 11. On the 11 inch side, score it five and a half. Give it a good crease with your bone folder. Make a template. This is six and a half inches long. I went every seven eighths of an inch and clipped out a triangle. I drew my line up to about a fourth of an inch so that that's how big um, my triangles are, about a fourth of an inch high. Went ahead and started notching out my pages and that's how you can get caught up. Okay, and I'll be back to show you the next step of gluing. All right, thanks for being patient. <laughs> I'll be back. I'm now going to show you how to glue your pages, which is not a hard thing to do, but it's just a matter of leaving the right amount of space. Um, so I went ahead and I finished clipping all of the edges so that um, they're all in the same spot because I made that template. And so I have the eight pages all notched and ready to go. Um, I did go ahead and I went around all of the, my papers with the fired brick um, distress ink. So I used that one. I like that pop of red, even though not all the pictures or all the paper has red. But I, because I used white as a background, like this paper was white for the most part. And being on white paper, I thought it needed something to kind of give it a border. So having that red border is kind of nice. And it makes the paper pop a little bit more. So what you need to do next, um, now that you have your papers cut five by six, you have done your inking along the edges, you've notched all your pages, you've painted all your skewers. Um, I am going to glue my pages together, like I said, so it's a little bit more durable. But you don't want to glue all the way up to the edge. You're going to need to leave yourself a little bit of wiggle room so that the skewers can move kind of freely when you turn the pages. You don't want them so tight that it's hard to turn and flip. So I'm going to leave, when I glue, I'm going to leave a little bit of a margin on, on the side of this top peak of the, the triangle cut. So I'll probably put my glue about, oh, let me get a, so from the top of the peak, I'm probably going to leave mm, a fourth of an inch leeway. So I'll start putting glue about right here. So how far over is that? About three-fourths of an inch over. Yeah. Yep. So at about three-fourths of an inch over, I will start adding my adhesive. You're going to want to make sure you get around the edges in the corner, the two corners the most, so that you don't have pages that you know, start to peel open. So you want to use a strong adhesive. I will tell you there's two that I've used. This book that I made, this is probably, geez, four or five years old, more than that. Um, the corners, you'll notice, are still glued together real, real well, and they're not coming apart. And I used a different adhesive then than what I'm going to use now, um, but I'm sure this is, I'm going to get probably a better effect than I did with the other one. The other one was a Yoohoo uh, glue stick, which I think is really, uh, it's a strong adhesive. And I don't usually use glue sticks, but you could put the glue stick in there and then use your brayer, you know, and give it a nice strong seal that way. But I am going to use the art glitter glue because since discovering this, I don't really use a whole lot of anything else. So 
I'm going to go ahead and open the page. I'm going to get a, a real good coverage along the border. Leaving that margin. So let me show you. See, can you tell where I stopped the glue? And then I'll just fill in some here. And I'll make sure that the corners are down real good. And making sure I'll have some excess probably come out the edges, but I can clean that up. And you can use your hand to give this a firm press. Oh, good thing I'm covering it with paper. <laughs> Got a little ink on there. Um, or you can go ahead and use a brayer just to make sure it's down real good. Okay. So you're going to see that there's still a space in there so that I can get the skewer. Oh, let me see. Can you see that there's still a space in there? so that I can get the skewer in there. Same way at the bottom. Let's see if I can pop it open a little bit. I want a little bit of space, okay? Otherwise getting that skewer in is gonna cause you some major grief because you wanna be able to put this in and have some wiggle room. So you need, you need some space to get this skewer in. And you're going to be weaving it up and down. So, so I'm going to go finish gluing my pages. I'll do one more just to show you. I would say it's better to leave too much um, of a space than not enough. That would be my, because some of these skewers, it takes a while to get them weaved through the two pages. Okay, so again, and then I'll just press down. Use your brayer if you think that'll give you a firm, more of a seal. Check your corners to make sure they're down real good. Okay. Um, this one didn't close. Um, I see a little bit of overhang, so I'm just going to trim that. It didn't meet real nice. I thought I checked all those when I had my when I was using my bone folder to fold them, but sometimes one slips by. There. Well, it's not probably not straight. I might have to put it in my trimmer just to make sure it's really straight. But okay, go ahead and glue all your pages, leaving a margin so you can get your skewer in there, and then I will show you how to attach the pages and get your patience ready because even though it's a nice binding. Sometimes it's a little uh, tricky to get the, the skewer in and out, uh, and you have to work with it a little bit. And especially my paper's a little thicker, so that's why it's going to be a little bit of a challenge for some of my pages. But never fear, we'll get it. Um, I'll be back after I've glued all my pages together. So I took a little bit of a break um, as I was filming because I got sick and I still have a little bit of a cough and a weird voice. So if I start to hack during the rest of this video, I apologize. So I kind of changed my other mind. Originally, I had said that I was going to um, attach the book with the um, kebab, the sticks, um, the skewers is the word I'm looking for. Sorry. <laughs> um, 
I kind of realized that the ones that I got are not the skewers for like kebabs. These are more for the donut pops or the cake pops that you make. So they are thinner. So I have not used these before. And so I am unsure as to how durable they're going to be. So it'll be interesting as I start to weave these through how well and how strong they're going to be. I hope I don't break any. So we'll find out. I also decided to decorate the pages first um, rather than wait until it was put together. So um, I'm going to walk through the pages and show you how I decorated them. And then I'm going to put the sticks in and show you how to weave them in and out for the piano hinge and um, how I'm going to tie it off at the top. And I uh, have some of this waxed uh, linen thread and I have a black one that I'm going to use um, to attach the sticks at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and walk through each page. Uh, hold on. Before I do that, um, when I first made these pages and we glued them, they were very firmly pushed down. So I went through all of my pages with one of the um, skewers and I went through and put it through every single one of the, oopsie. holes here and I kind of pushed on the edges to open them up a little bit and I think that's going to help us a lot when it's time to put our book together so you want to open those and uh, so that they're not so flat it's going to be easier and I just kind of gave them a push okay um, with the stick inside and then I just went through all of them and did that. And then I took them right back out. So you might want to do that next so that they're not so flat. Okay. So it's, you can see that there's a more of an opening and a hole at the ends. So it's going to be easier to weave them through. Can you see that they're not really flat. They're opened. Okay. All right. So let's walk through each page just in case you're interested in how to decorate. I tried to use just about everything from the um, Cartabella collection. Uh, and so I received a package of the ephemera. I had some chipboard stickers and I had some regular stickers and so, and also some seam binding. So every once in a while I added something extra that I had in my stash, but I tried to stick with the main um, parts that I was sent. So this is going to be page one. And I also inked around everything that I could with the Tim Holtz fi uh, fired brick. And so you can see I have a red border around everything. Okay. So these were stickers, uh, the banner stickers. And I, from my stash, I added the red bling here in between. Okay. And then this was um, a sticker and I adhered it to a piece of the cardstock and I cut it in a circle. And I had this saying, living in a winter wonderland, and I matted it on paper and outlined it in red. So to me, it kind of looks like a snow globe the way it uh, is set up. I had a snowflake from my stash, and then I used my bow at all that I got for Christmas for the first time. And I made this um, bow, and I added a red piece of bling. So that's going to be page one. On the back, you can't add a whole lot of thickness um, so things have to stay kind of flat and I want to actually use it for pictures so I put the matte pages in I put the paper down so that I do actually put pictures there <laughs> um, I adhered one of the stickers in the corner um, you are able to tuck something behind because I did not glue it at the top okay on this page I added a little pocket um, I think let me measure that for you. It's five inches across and I think I went two and a half. Yeah, I went two and a half inches tall. Now, normally when you make pockets, you have the half inch tab on each side so you can fold it over. But because this book we need to keep thin, I did not do that. I just took that flat rectangle and glued, put um, the glitter glue around the outside edges um, so that it would stay flat. So um, you might want to consider that if you're going to put a pocket. And then I have a sticker, two stickers from the collection, the border sticker, and then this one down here. And then I added the tag that says um, it's a double axle type of day. And I added the tag that says things I love about you or the card. Okay. 
So if you add a pocket, try and keep it flat. And there's some of that awesome seam binding too. On the back of this page, I put a winter time uh, label at the top and I left it uh, open at the bottom so I can stick a picture under there. And then I fussy cut it. <coughs> I'm so sorry. I took uh, out of the, on the 12 by 12 sheet of paper, I cut out the house and some snow at the bottom and put that at the, on the bottom of the page. And I left that open again um, so I can tuck a picture down in there. Okay. This one I pretty much kept as is. It's such a cute scene. The only thing I added was some three-dimensional snowflakes that came on the chipboard um, collection. And then I added the word chili with two snowflake stickers on each side. But I wanted to keep that one open because it was cute. On the back, I used my uh, envelope punch board and I made an envelope. Um, ooh, let's see what size. The envelope is about four and five eighths by about four and five eighths. Um, the first one I made was too big. So you just kind of have to play with it a little bit. I still wanted just a hair of a border. So um, I don't remember what's, I think I started with six and three fourths or I no, I did seven and a fourth inch square on my envelope punch board. That's what I did. Oops, I got a glitter thing. Um, and then when I adhered it to the page, I only did it on three sides so that I could put one of the cards in there. Um, I left the back plain so I could write. And then I just added the winter fun tab on top. And then I did go ahead and put magnets to keep the envelope down. Um, and I covered the magnets with snowflakes. And then inside, this is from the ephemera packet. And I just put that in there. So that's cute, I think. And the, st the snow sticker. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> I am so sorry. Seriously, I'm on day like 17 of this stupid cough and all that kind of stuff. Okay, um, on this page, I just took some tool and wrapped it around, tied it in a knot, and I have this blingy, jeweled, wired thing. I don't know what you call it, but I think that's pretty, and it adds some sparkle, so as I was tying the knot, I just put a piece in there just to add a little excitement there, and then on the back, I have a piece of um, the um, artisan cardstock from Country Craft Creations. Again, covered, I went around it in the red fired brick, and then I have a chipboard piece on the corner, and I left the top open so I could stick a picture in there. Okay. This is my favorite page, I think. Um, <coughs> no, this is ridiculous. Um, I made an L pocket, and I went five inches across, and about almost, I think, yeah, five and a half inches tall, and I didn't do anything fancy. All I did was I didn't like measure it. I just kind of took it into my cutter and cut it at an angle. And again, I do not have the half inch tabs to attach it to the paper. I wanted to keep it flat. So I just put a line of glue, the glitter glue here and on the bottom. And so that I could, you know, have that pocket. I put a border sticker at the bottom and two of the ski stickers because this background paper had skiers. So... And then this is a chipboard ticket. I made a tag, a real basic tag. Um, and I just put some of the decorative paper on there and wrote snow or put the sticker snow time at the bottom. I have seam binding and tool at the top. On the back of that page, um, I just added um, two matted, a matted piece of paper on top of another one to give it that uh, outline. And I put hit the slope sticker at the top. So I tried to do some flat pages if it was going to be against a page that had a little bit more thickness. This page, um, love the paper. I added a side pocket and with a decorative punch. Again, I just glued on the three sides, no half inch tab. Um, the pop-up stickers, the dimensional stickers that spell winter. I barely got them on there. I had to do it, you know, cattywampus. Um, and then I just put the snow hot and winter. This came from the ephemera pack and I just stuck those in there. Okay. Turn that page over. I had to use this ice skate, um, 
the card from the collection. I loved it. Um, but it was too long for the pages that I made. So I cut off the edge of the ticket and I just moved it down so that I could make it fit. And then I had to trim around the edges. I hope that makes sense. So I have a seam underneath the seam binding. So I covered it so that you couldn't see it because I had to make the tag shorter. So I cut off the edge, moved it over, and then I had to trim off the extra so that it would fit. And then I only glued it on three sides so I could put a tag in there. I left the back plain. And that just sticks out there like that. This page I wanted for pictures, and so all I did was add a floral corner uh, and a chipboard piece in the center of it. Can you see that? On the back, a winter tag. I had a different, I had another one of these flowers over here, but I think it's going to be too thick when I try and put the book together. I'm going to have to try and get that glue off. Um, I think it's going to be too thick to um, put together with the skewers. So I took off that second flower and made it flatter by the binding side. I'll get that glue off. So winter. On my last page, uh, room for a picture, use the sticker that said winter on a sideways, put it on sideways, and the back I left plain. So the next step and the last step is just to combine all these hinges by weaving um, our skewers from one side to the next side going back and forth. So you're going to have some holes that are not going to have a stick in. And so I'm going to show you how to do that next. I'm hoping it goes smoothly with these skinnier skewers, being as I have the cake um, pop sticks instead. Um, we'll see what happens. And there's your stinking book. I think it's so cute. All right, I'm going to take a break real quick and get organized, and then I'll be back to show you how to make that piano hinge. Okay, so I started to take my skewers and put them into my binding and I wanted to do it first um, without being on camera just to make sure I was getting it right um, and I want to show you I'll show you what this is over here you're always going to work um, I've got my two pages here and um, you're going to bring your skewer up through the right hand side first one then over to the left hand side second back to the right hand side third back to the left hand side so you're going back and forth every other side with your skewer so you're skipping every other one on a page okay so you're going to take your skewer and you go in the first one and it's going to come out the hole and you want to slide that skewer then into this second one Okay, and you might have to twist a little bit. Now, as it's coming out of that second hole, you're going to go back to the other side and put it in the third hole. I'm going to back it up and get it through that third hole. Now, as it's coming out of that third hole, you want to come over to the left-hand side and put it in the fourth hole. I gotta back it up a hair. Get that over there. Okay. Now, as it's coming out of this fourth hole on the left, you're gonna go back and loop it into the fifth hole over here on the right. Put it in the circle. Whoops, back it up. Okay. So now we're ready to go back to the left-hand side, and we're going to attach it to the next hole. And this is why it was so helpful to stretch out with these skewers earlier. Okay. And then you're going to go back to the right-hand side through that top one. Back that up a hair. There we go. And then I push mine all the way through. 
some people like to have some the, some of the stick coming out the bottom and some coming out the top. I like it flat on the bottom. If you don't like the sharp end on the top, you can cut those off, but I would do that after you have all your book together because it's easier to weave through the hinge if you leave this sharp, okay? So um, you can connect then another one, and I'll do that. Here, I'll put these two together. So now you always start at the bottom on the right. So bottom right, up to the left, back and forth, right, left, right, left. Okay, so I'm going to start with my skewer on the bottom. Now I'm going to come and pick up that second hole on the left. And I, because I already have one in there, there we go. This might have been hard to do because I already attached it to the second page. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the right and go to the third hole. I have to work with it a hair. There we go. And now I'm going to come pick up that open one on the left, which is the fourth. And then I'm going to go back and pick up that hole on the right, which is the fifth. Back it up. Oh, it doesn't want to catch. Hold on. I don't want to be in a stinker. Let's see. Let me open it up a little bit. Okay. Get down there, you little bugger. Okay. And then it's coming out on the right, so I need to go back over to the left. I hope you can see this. It's kind of... And as it's coming out the left, you go back to the right and go through the hole. Okay. And I'm going to keep weaving them through back and forth. And so they open up real nice. The pages are real easy to turn because I didn't, you know, I left that margin when we glued. That's when I had a problem. I got it a little bit. Okay. So they turn really nicely. I'm going to go ahead and finish. Remember, go from the bottom right to the left, right, left, right, left. So you're going every other one. Okay. I'm going to finish putting the book together and then I'm going to show you. These are tight, but I still like to put something at the top here to keep them from coming out. Um, that's why I think some people like to leave some at the bottom because they wrap thread around the bottom too, but it's firm enough and it's not like I'm going to have real little kids looking at this so I'm not worried about it coming apart. So I'm going to go ahead and finish putting it together and now that I'm ready to go to the next page I'm going to start at this bottom one on the right and I'm going to attach it to my next page by going bottom right, second left, third right, fourth left. Okay. All right, once again, I'll be back and uh, I'll put the string at the top to keep the skewers from coming out. All right, be back. Hopefully you didn't have very many problems getting your skewers through the holes if you glued it with, um, and left that little bit of a margin and you opened up the holes a little bit with the skewers. Um, mine was pretty easy to get through. Um, I have all of them in now, okay? Oh, the lighting is bad, hold on that help? Mm, not much. Okay. Wow, the lighting. Hold on. Let me turn this one off. Does that help a little bit? Okay. Yeah, you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so the last thing is I don't want the skewers to come out, and so I push them as far down as they can go. So I'm pushing them down so that they're all equal at the bottom. Okay, and I have that wax linen, and I just cut off, now see mine's black, so let me move this so you can see better. It's probably really dirty under here, but let's pretend like it's not. 
Okay, that probably helps. Okay, so I have this black wax linen thread and I just cut about 25 inches long. Okay, and I'm going to start in the front and I'm going to leave a tail because I'm eventually going to be hanging a charm off of this uh, bottom piece. Okay, and you're going to weave in and out like figure eights around the skewers. Okay, so I hope my hands are going to be in the way. I'm going to try and so I'm going to leave a little bit up front. I'm going to wrap around the first one and then around the, going back and forth around the skewers. I don't know if you can see that. And now front, back, front, back. So push that down. Okay. And now you're going to wrap it around and go back to the front. And you're going to go around the front to the back of the second one, to the front of the next one, to the back of the next one, front, back, front. Push them down. Okay. And you're just going to keep doing that. So. Um, oh shoot, I must have skipped some. Hold on. It's easier said than done when you're trying to... Okay, so... I went back, front, back, front, back, front, back, push them down, wrap it around, the front to the back, front, back, front, back, I am so sorry if my hands are in the way, okay, push them down, and you're going to keep doing that, and now I'm ending in the front, so I'm going to wrap it around the back, front, back, front, back, front, back, get back there, and push them down. I gotta tighten that. I don't like how that's so loose. Hold on. Let's see. Pull it tight. Okay. And you're just going to keep going round and round until you like the thickness. See, I gotta pull that. There we go. So I don't want any loose loops. Pushing them down, wrapping around, back front, back front, I'm back in the front. I'm going to wrap it around. Push it down. Keep going in and out. I 
can't talk much. I'm concentrating on making sure I get the right pattern. And I think I'm going to go around one more time. And you, I like it a little bit thicker. And I'm gonna go back to the front. You wanna end in the front so you can put your charm on. Okay, I'm happy with that thickness. There we go. Okay. And then you're gonna, I guess 22 inches was way too long, but um, I'd rather have it be too long than too short. And I'm just gonna tie a double knot. I think that's what you call this, I don't know. I don't know the official names. And then I'm gonna attach a charm, a snowflake charm to each side, and I'll trim them after I have attached it. So I'm gonna use this snowflake charm. I'm gonna decide how high up I want it. And I'll just, again, tie a double knot. And I'll tie one more time. Oh, no, that's not going really off. Okay, and then I'm going to take my scissors and trim okay so you can see there's one and now this one i might uh, i have another snowflake charm that looks a little bit different and i have two way too long so i'm going to trim some of it off just get through the eye here and this one you guys decide you want this one shorter longer I think I want it shorter, so I'm going to put a knot way up high. Uh, that's not how I wanted it. Oh, shoot. Oh, well, okay. I get to see my fingers, sorry. Okay, so there I have two snowflakes dangling. And I have that at the top to prevent them from falling off. Okay, so you can f easily flip through. The pages are not too snug. It turns very easily. And ta-da! So... I would use, this is the type of album, you know, it has no chipboard. I would use it when you need to make something quick, um, when you just want to use the paper uh, pack that you have purchased, use the um, embellishments that come with it. It's a fast, easy album. Um, sometimes I like different hinges than always doing the hidden hinge. So there's just a little variety for you. So I hope that I was clear enough and my hands didn't get in the way too much. Um, I'm hoping you'll give it a try. Let me know if you have questions and I appreciate it when you leave me comments and you guys have been great about being very positive and I appreciate that. Um, cause this is still kind of new to me. Uh, so I appreciate your patience as I try and explain what I'm doing for you. All right. I hope all of you have a great new year. Thanks so much for watching.